everybody. I am here in Ghana and I'm telling you, a lot of people wonder where I keep getting all these fresh cuts from. And one thing I do, anytime I go into a country, I have to find the spot where I can get a cut. Uh, Cause even, even the fellas, we, we are particular about our haircuts, our beards and all of that. And so when I came to Accra, there was one name that kept coming up, man. And, and this is Nate, yeah. Nate the barber. He's the world renowned barber here in Accra, Ghana. It seems like everybody has been through yeah. this establishment, yeah. but I understand why, because I've gotten the best haircuts of my life yeah. in this building right here. Oh, straight up. And I've worked with several of your barbers. And it's like, you must go out and recruit the best of the best. Yeah. But anyway, we're going to talk to Nate and get uh, the story, some of the backdrop on how he uh, started Nate the Barber's Place and um, and just how he got started in barbering. So, man, uh, welcome to Maximum Impact. Hope you're doing well. All is well. Good, good, man. Good. I'm doing good. I'm doing yeah. good. Yeah. So, so tell me, how long have you been barbering? How long have you been cutting people here? Um, so, my whole barbering career, I think I've been in the industry for about 16 years now. You look, you look like you're about 16. What you talking about, man? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> so, I actually started in 2006. You know, so when I was like a little boy, I used to be like okay, the okay, kid okay. in the we, barber we, shop. Okay, like three years old. Yeah. Okay, okay. No, I used to be like, I think I started when I was like, I think 12, 13. Okay. You know, so I used to go to the barber shop and then, you know, like, um, you know, it was my friend shop actually. So it was my friend. So I just go there, go sit there, just chill. So you would sweep the floor and yeah, get all the hair up. Yeah, just sweep the floor, you know, clean the place. You know, he sent me around, buy me blade, buy me um, cream, you know. So I was just like this errand boy, you know, and at the same time, it's like my big friend, a big brother, sort of, you know. So I just go and just chill at the barber shop, you know. So, um, yeah, so that's how the whole thing came about. I never really, really thought that, you know, it was something that I was into. But mm -hmm. I mean, just sitting there for some time, I started understanding what was going on, you know. And then also, um, I just, so I was even doing art before I went to the barber shop. So, so you're I'm, doing art? Yeah, I do art. I draw, I do pencil okay. shade, you know. Okay, okay. So, the art is already been in there, so I think that was also why I kind of found the interest in the barbering because, because you know, barbering cutting is, so. is, 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 all, is also an art. Yeah. So I mean, so 2005, you know, um, I think um, I used to go there after school, back and forth after school, and then I think I finished um, junior high school. Okay. And then you know, in Ghana, you have to wait for like a year to continue to senior high school. Okay. okay. You know, and then I think my senior high school that I go, I didn't, I couldn't. It was too far away and then you couldn't afford the means and all of that so i couldn't go that same year you know so i was just like uh, i think just chilling you know i couldn't go to the, the school at the time so i was just waiting so i had to spend like a year in the house wow so that one year okay that was just in the house while my friends were in school and my mates were like you know in school doing their thing i mean i just you know started doing the haircut you picked up a trade yeah you know so he would he would like oh help me with the kids you know, so I'll just be cleaning up the kids when he finished the haircut and stuff. So I started understanding what he was doing, you know. And I realized, no, I think I really like what doing this, you know. So, I mean, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Then I realized that, no, I was getting to know the whole barbering thing, you know. So the whole, it's not just cutting, but it's also relationship. It's also getting your clients. You started yeah. building your clientele base at that point. So at that time, it was just for fun, you know. Okay. And it was just something I was just doing to just while away time. You know, it wasn't something I was doing as a business. I was a small boy, like 12 years or 11 years. But you, you know, picked so, up that trade though, yeah, yeah. You know, and I didn't even know that it was gonna become something in the future, I was just doing it. And everything that I do, I like to like put in like everything. Mm -hmm. You know, so if that's what I found myself doing, I put in everything, you know. So a little boy in the neighborhood, you know, I started doing the kit and then because I had a background of arts, I kind of understood it really quick. So I was picking up too fast. And then now he made me actually do the kits. When the kits come, he would let me do it and then he would do the shape up and stuff and then you know i was getting the shape up i was getting all of that and then i think it got to a point where um he would let me handle the kits fully oh really you know? yeah so i mean after handling the kits and all of that what have you happened i think yeah so i think the kids haircut was so good that now the, the older people in the neighborhood were like well, who cut these kids so they saw the children, and then the older people were like, okay, who did that shape? Or who know, did that face? Yeah, so. who, who, well, they didn't have beards, but you know, but I know, right? <laughs> right, right, right. they did, that's a whole other story. Yeah. But, but it's like, so the adults started seeing it, yeah. and then they said, all right, 
they were looking name. for who did this kid and they'd be like oh it's Nate and at the time I wasn't even big enough to you know use the barber chair because oh. I was too short and the barber chair is big so yeah, yeah, yeah. like so you have to stand on the box or something yeah you, you have to be in a plastic chair for me to be able to reach you you know so I mean the adults you know the older people started like you know you know letting me do it one after the other and then like the name just blew you know so Nate 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 at the time I wasn't even Nate like Nate the barber came up when I opened my first shop you and know, then where was your first shop located? My first shop is in, it's on the boundary. Um, it's at Sunflower Street. Okay, right, right. Not yeah, too far from right, right. Okay. Yeah, that's the first also. one. Yeah, that's the first one. This one is the second one. So the first one was in 2017. Um, yeah, that's my first ever shop. And then this one was in 2019. And then the third one, 2020. So why did you decide to open a, a barbershop? Why not just cut, you know, why not just keep cutting everybody? Um, why, why go into the... The entrepreneurial space into the business lane yeah so i think there was a lot of problems in the industry that i wasn't like cool with i felt like you know there was a lot of things that needed to change you know because mm -hmm. i was at the time you know in ghana when you come to barber shop it's like very dirty people wear slippers mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. you know like it wasn't something that people respected okay. you know when when they say someone is a barber nobody really care about a barber because like barbers are people who maybe they couldn't go to school or they couldn't they just failed in life or something that you just have to be a barber like you couldn't afford anything really they become a barber back in the day so nobody really really respected the crafts barbering you know in ghana so i was like no if i'm gonna be a barber then i have to like change this industry i have to like make it different you know and i used to always like i always like to look good i always like to do things certain way you know right, right. so when i was working for people i mean to cut the long story short when i started working for people the things that I wanted to see in the barber shop, I wasn't seeing it. So you would see the dirty, the, the you know, dark. like yeah, the barber shop is still like you know, people wear slippers to the shop, not using the know, sanitizer, yeah, there's no and sanitizer, sterilizer, like, sterilizer, okay. like <clears throat> using one clipper, I was everything, like, no, everything. everything. I was like, no, 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 this is not good. So when I started preaching to the owners of the business, like yo, you know, what? you need to invest into this thing, you know, because like you need to do it this way and that way and all that. But they'd be like, oh no, you know what? This is what is working, so just keep to it, you know. So the culture was like barbershop was like like not the place where anybody who like is maybe gonna think that i want to be successful in life want to be a barber understood you know so you not only change the standard for your clients you change the standard for the barber yeah so it's like you made barbering yeah. a a trade or an industry that somebody can be proud of yeah that's what i'm seeing i'm hearing i'm hearing multiple layers to the story yeah. so what, what was the response when you presented that to the owners how did they respond i mean they're like no, no no i'm not about to invest that much money and you know people get comfortable as soon as they start making money off of something they've not put too much in right you know so like they've not really put that much in it, but people are coming anyway and i was um i was at like the most clientele that everywhere that i go i make your shop busy mm. so imagine that the shop is already busy and then they are not really uh what's the name they're not really investing so much they're gonna get comfortable you know so like i was I keep pushing, pushing, pushing. So I got tired of pushing, right? So then I started thinking, okay, no, if nobody want to do it, then I have to do it yourself, myself. Yeah. You know, so that's when I started thinking, no, I need to open my own space, you know? So the, the whole Nate the Barbers thing started like, so many people knew, knowing me, like celebrities knowing me and stuff. And now, so now I had a popularity, right? So now I was like, no, since they cannot do this thing the way I want it to be, because I'll go to the barber shop and my colleagues are wearing slippers, they are looking dirty, and I come and I'm dressed up. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You know, I'm not coming to like be one of you guys, you know, like I want to present myself the way I want to be treated. Mm. You got some good say. stuff right here. This, yeah, this is good wanna, business work ethic, customer service. Straight up. All like, kinds of lessons <laughs> in here. You know, because like I feel like people respect appearance a lot. Yes. Because like if you. No matter who you are, mm -hmm. if I walk to you and then you look raggedy, I'm you not gonna, about you, you'd be yeah. filthy rich. Yeah, and, and be raggedy, yeah. and then people won't pay attention. Nobody cares. Like yeah. people want to, people pay attention to appearance. Yeah, and you know, being in the industry where people's appearance is the number one thing that we take care of, I was like, no, I myself have to look good. And because people didn't respect barbers, I wouldn't want you to come and disrespect mm. me. So I make sure I look good, so that when you come, you know how You're to like, talk hey, to me. Yeah, you know. So then, like. It was selling like people come and then they want to just vibe with me because like you know i look good people would want to like after the haircut they want to go out with me they'd be like yo Nate, are you cool for weekend like because i look good and i you know they want to be around me so yeah. i realized that people were kind of getting comfortable around my brand because of the way i was carrying myself and the way i was carrying my business right so i preached it to all the people that i worked for nobody bought it and i was like okay cool so 2017 mm -hmm. You know, when I had the opportunity to get, you know, a space, it was a small space, you know, I started with two mirrors, you know, because like I didn't have enough to do it with no chair and all of that. Then I started putting the whole vision 
into that. Into that. You know, and it was clean, everything. You know, Even if I did two mirrors or whatever, but it was clean. clean. It was what you like, wanted. I didn't have, you know, when you go to barbershop, they have like pictures of the haircut and stuff. Yeah. I didn't believe in that. I was oh, like, no, good. my style, clean shop. When you come, I'll show you pictures online because everything is online. Yeah. So I'm not about to paste pictures on the walls and the glass and make everything too crowdy. But when you come, I'll show you online. So people are like, oh, your barbershop is really plain. Some people liked it. Some people were like, oh, no, why? You don't shop it. I'm like, no, this is my style. And then, you know, we started from there and then, and then, People that like quality and high standard stuff were now, to my clientele, was becoming people who wanted class. Yeah. People who wanted like clean environment, people who wanted like seriousness. You know, so that mm. was the kind of clientele that, you know, I was attracting. And then, you know, every single thing that I wanted to put in the people's barbershop when I was working for them, I was like, no, I'm gonna do it. So that's where the whole thing changed, you know? Now, that's what drew me in. Yeah. Because I knew what I was looking for. Yeah. And when I came in, I sensed everything that you put into it yeah. without knowing. Mm. I felt the clean, I felt the professionalism. I could tell that there was a system and a structure in place yeah. that you took time mm -hmm. and put in, you know, because it's like we want to look good. I wanted my fade to be right. Yeah. I wanted my beard to be right. Yeah. I wanted things to be. Yeah. And every barber who has cut my hair has been first class. So it's like, I could come in here and, you know how sometimes you go to that barber shop yeah. and you see that guy sitting there yeah, like, no, that's all right, yeah, that's all right. <laughs> yeah. like, nobody yeah. wants to go there. But yeah. every time I come in, yeah. I have referred people. Yeah. I posted on my social media. I said, I got the best bar uh, haircut of my life in a Ghana. That's dope. And <laughs> so other people came. Yeah. And they posted the same thing. They said, you're right. I just got the best haircut. And they came to Nate's. I mean, that, that's yeah. the deal. So yeah. you didn't know that side of the I story. I know, right? Now you know. So when you talk about celebrities, are you uh, are you able to mention any of the celebrities that have been through? Um, honestly, I've worked on everybody. You know, I've done I've done like from the the highest highest to the lowest. You know, I mean, I've done Whiskey. Whiskey is my number one guy. I've done um, Vic Mensa. I've done I've done um, Michael Dapa. Okay. I've done when it comes to the Ghanaian celebrity, I've done almost everybody. Okay. I've done I've done um, Shatawale. I've done um, Kitty. I've done okay. Kwame. I've, I've okay, done, you've um, done everybody. Like okay. when it comes to the celebrities, I've done everybody. Internationally, I mean, Whiskey is on the list. Um, Vic Mensa is on okay. the list. Um, uh, Michaela Cole, you know, she's an Oscar, you know, okay. award-winning um, movie actress. And, and they all, they've all been through here. They've all been here. The great thing about, you know, the, the brand is that they want to come here. You get it, like, a lot of times, celebrities don't want to go to the barbershop, but, you know, they want to come here. So that's, that's the... I think that's one of the things that I mean. I think when I think about, I'm always proud of. Like they want to come to the barber shop. They don't mind coming to the barber shop. Like you come to the barber shop and you see like celebrities that are just chilling. Um, Kim Promise will just come and just be chilling. Okay. Everybody, you know, uh, mention them. Uh, you know, I mean, you, uh, has Reggie been here? Yeah, everybody. They just come. So Reggie's been here. Who's that? Reggie Reg Rockstone. Yeah. Reggie Rockstone. No. Reggie Rockstone. No. Okay. Okay. No. We gotta get Reggie. You know, Reggie is like a. a, a a dreadlock yeah, person. Yeah, so. but he still got to get trimmed. Yeah, the trim. Hey, Reggie, that. you know what you got to <laughs> do, man. Come on now. Come on You there. know, I need to give him the, the cut <laughs> of his life still, you know. Seal the deal, <laughs> it's not so, too late. So I'm going to hit him up. I'm yeah. Saying. So, okay, so you've done uh, Kwame, Eugene. Everybody. You know, Shatawale. Um, I had a few opportunities to do Sakwadi, but, you know, the times were in meeting. Like, I got it. You got know, it. and all of that. But, you know, I'm everybody. But, that, know? but that's what you've done. You have, you have created a brand and you have set the standard. Yeah. And people want that. Yeah. So you didn't lower the standard, you elevated oh, the standard yeah. for customer service. And I tell people all the time, if anybody wants to win anywhere, yeah. the customer service is the yeah. key. One thing I don't play with. Yeah, I can tell. I, I know promise I... my customer service, I care about that more than even the, the haircut. I, because I the tell. haircut, I know we are good. Right. So apart from you know being good, what else is the customer going to go with? Hmm. How is the person feeling? So it's not just about cutting the person, you have a good haircut and you don't have a good customer service, you still didn't do well. So the customer service to me is the most important in my business, more than anything else. How the customer feels, you know, and I care about the customer. So my rule is very simple. The customer is number one, the business is second before it comes to me and then the employees. Wow. You get it. So if you complain about something, I want to listen to the customer first. If the customer is okay, then I want to listen to you. You get what I'm trying to say? Got because it. like the most if without the customer, there is no there's business. Nothing. There's nothing. A, a lot know? of people don't get that though. A lot of people do not understand it, and then and expect you to pay for poor customer service no, 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 and no. expect you to come back. You, you know? know, yeah. But you yeah. get it. You get it. Oh, you have to. You know. And a lot of times, people have no choice. That's why they keep patronizing those kind of businesses. Mm. But 
now there's so many choices there's so many barber shops around so what is the difference what yeah. are you giving that other people are not giving that is the only thing right now yeah so if you're a good barber i can manage some other barber somewhere you know so if i come to you and your customer service is bad and then somebody will give me like a good um, a cool barbering but the right. customer service is good you know you, you, you're, all, you're good with that now what is your vision do you plan on opening more locations um so honestly the plan is to like you know take over the whole Ghana. You know I have a few locations that we're gonna like. with it. Um, we have too many people calling us to come to Kumasi, but the thing is the management. You know I don't like to do things halfway. Right, right, right. So I'm not trying to like go there if I don't fully feel like I can be control. I can't control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, cause like right now even the three locations, to be honest, is a little bit too much right now mm, for me to handle everything. Time because you have to be here, be there. And like, it's exhausting. You know, so I'm trying to move steadily i don't want to move you don't want to you don't want to you don't want to scale too quickly yes and to the point where it overwhelms you yeah. and now it becomes something you don't enjoy doing anymore yeah, because yeah. you have too many clients yeah. and you can't manage them and give them the customer service yeah. that you want to provide so you're pacing it that's yeah. what i'm hearing i actually told myself this year so if you really look at the history you see that 2017 was the first one 19 was the second one 20 2020 um to 2021 was yeah. the third one so okay. it was two two years interval oh, so, two years. so yes. maybe next but year now i told myself like the, the next three years we're not doing anything so you want to focus when on i want to focus on building the system more you get it he, need, he needs to do business coaching for, <laughs> for everybody i mean because really yeah i mean i'm telling you i go to so many places and they don't get it Trust and they me, want that money things. and they'll they take your money they'll mess up and they won't they won't offer anything yeah. back you know a lot of people are in the business because they're in this the business me it's a lifestyle okay this is my life this is your passion this is your lifestyle this is, this you is know your heart. so so it's not something that i'm doing for the money like i never even thought of the money when i started i was just trying to solve the problem mm. and the money came you get it i was just trying to like make people look good and i had an issue with a lot of things that barbers were doing barbers didn't get it i was like no this is not right this is not right so i came in to prove all the things that wasn't right and then now people started believing in it because like you know the truth is always gonna yeah, outshine right, yeah. everything you know? right. so i came out like no headlines i'm not supposed to be going back it's supposed to stay forward i came in i'm like no you're not supposed to hold the clipper that way you are injuring the client you're not supposed to touch the person's skin with your bare hand so i came in with those Ooh, things yeah you get it okay so it was to solve the problem and then the money came with it you know i tell people all the time even like when i do tours and everything i tell them i don't do the tours for the money yeah I do the two words to create the experience yeah. because I want people to have that experience. Yeah. And as a result, the money has come. That's true. I didn't even set out. I was, so when you say that, that resonated because some people are just doing tours to get that money. Because right? like they're cutting hair just to get that money. Yeah, that's but they why don't you, you can't really, there. really get there. Yeah. The only, the true success come through people who are passionate about what they're doing and they're not doing it for the money. Yeah. Because like, honestly speaking, the way I've moved, me myself sometimes, I wonder like, how, how am I able to do all of this? Yeah. Because you know, it's the problem I'm just trying to solve. And I'm just thinking about, okay, how to solve the other problem? How to solve the other problem? The dream is to get to the, to, to have the barbershop where, you know, the clients comes and they have complete peace. peace. You know? That word peace. We keep hearing that word peace. You know? They come to the barber and they have peace. You know, have a, a satisfaction where, you know, you know that when you walk to near the barber's place, every barber there is good. You know that at the end of the day, your haircut is going to be good. Your, your, your customer service is going to be all right. You know, so you walk in here with a with a complete trust that you're going to be fine. And then you walk out feeling OK, feeling good, you know. So, I mean, for me personally, is the customer, then the business, then me, then my guys. You get it. So, well, you know, let me say this to everybody. This is where I come to get my haircut. <laughs> I look forward to coming to get my haircut. Now I got I got a real smooth barber back in America, there yeah. in DC, <laughs> at Midtown Barbershop, Kevin. So he's been cutting my hair for twenty some odd years. That's so dope. sometimes I feel like I'm committing uh, barber adultery when I come here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's a big thing for like uh, I mean, um, the client and the barber. Like, oh, yeah. it's a serious commitment. Yeah. You know, it's difficult to switch barber. Even <laughs> me myself, I have like almost twenty something barbers. It's, di it's difficult for you to go. Specific people that yeah. I can actually, you know, so I do get it. Yeah, so the, so the fact that I, I come here and, I mean, I look forward to getting a haircut. I mean, if I even if I'm traveling throughout the continent and I'm going somewhere, I'm like, well, how long? It, perhaps I can hold on a few extra days <laughs> and get back to Nate's, you know, because that's the level of service that I get here. And, and what I say to everyone, no matter where you are, whether you're in America, Canada, anywhere on the continent if your customer service is on point whether you're serving food 
doing haircuts, uh, doing hair, whatever it is, if it's on point, that's going to always get you more clients. If you're an Uber driver and, and you're serving your clients well, that could turn into you becoming a permanent driver for someone and who knows yeah. what that turns into. You could end true. up learning another skill or another trade. That's so true. that customer service is so important. Yeah. What, um, what message would you have for someone as we get ready to wrap this up? As far as if they're starting in business, maybe they're not looking to be a barber, but they're looking to go into a particular business, in, in particular in Ghana, yeah. because that's where you are. Yeah. A lot of people trying to figure it out. Like you said, you were 12 years old. Yeah. You know, you weren't in school, but yeah. you turned that opportunity into success. Yeah. So what would you say to some of your fellow countrymen and women? If they want to, I mean, do business in Ghana or just business in general. Just in general, just what they, you know, to, to inspire them uh, to. To be honest, um, I think the key thing is to actually know that you are in there to solve a problem. And now the focus should never ever be the money. Because mm. you see, if you focus too much on the money, you start cutting corners. You start not like trying to get the product to be good. If the product is good, the money is going to come. So if you want to get into a business, study your product and make sure your product is good. So that when the people now buy it, they are not just buying the hype, they are buying a good product. And now the people are going to sell your product to other people. So I think you should be true to what you want to do. And when you're true to it, stick to it and make sure that it works. Everything that I keep telling, I mean, I always tell people that, listen, if something is on your heart and you know for sure that that is what you're truly, truly um, um, I'm trying to put out there, it's just a matter of time. If you put the right things in place and you do the right things and you are true to it, it's going to pay off. You're hearing it firsthand from a living success story, and the words of wisdom could not be more true. I mean, if you come by and you see for yourself, you follow his example, and you take, you know, and I'm sure he'll be willing to talk to you if you swing by, get a haircut, of course, and, uh, and swing by and see, see for yourself. I mean, again, I encourage everybody who's visiting from abroad to make sure you stop by. Nate's three locations, two in East Lagarde, one in Osu. Yeah. You will not be disappointed, I'm telling you. You probably see me in here because uh, this is where I come when I'm in Ghana. When I'm in D.C., I'm at Midtown Barbershop, Kevin and the crew. Uh, but this is where I've chosen to uh, to make my barbering home right here in Accra, Ghana. So, Nate, man, I thank you for sharing your story, bro. opening up your uh, barbershop so everybody can see. Uh, I will make sure everybody sees all of your social media handles. Yeah. And the best of success to you, man. I mean, Thanks, this bro. is this inspired me. <laughs> and uh, I, I was here yesterday, got my cut, got my fade in I right know, here. Right? <laughs> so I'll be back next week. But anyway, yeah. uh, everyone, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the share button. And until next time, take care, be safe. Stay fresh also. <laughs>